It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Pain Capital Management, along with the chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this? Fantastic morning this weekend. Since it's, uh, it's gotten a little crisp in the air, uh, the air's, air's gotten a little chillier, I decided I'm going to do some research. Flying down to Naples today, do a little research on the state of Florida's economy. That sounds like really hard work, especially considering that jacuzzi in your lanai. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an excellent place to do research. <laughs> That's all your best thoughts come. Yes. <laughs> Rumor has it. Well, we have a fantastic show for you this morning to help with your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about retirement self-sabotage. Don't mess up the things you can control. There's so many forces in the financial world we have no power over. Bob and I are going to break down some of the things that you can't influence and focus on the things that you can influence. We're going to talk about estate planning. You know, we tend to neglect how and who our wealth is being transferred to. Bob and I are going to discuss some simple but important proactive estate planning strategies that you want to employ with your own wealth. And we have this week's financial pornography. We're going to talk about some of the crazier things out there so that you can stay away from some of the bad advice that's very prevalent in today's media when it comes to your finances. And along with our Spotlight segment, we have our star financial advisor, CFP, Michelle McKinnon on the show this morning. She's going to talk about a real retirement plan that she worked on and some of the mistakes this couple is making with their planning so you can avoid those mistakes with your own planning. So let's hop right to it. Let's talk about the things you can control and the things you can't control. And Bob, you know, in my mind, you know, we hear this a lot is just all these different strategies on how to time the market, when to get out of the market, are we in a bubble right now? And let's face it, being able to deal with the ups and downs of the short-term market, we have no control over it. You know, Raya, no truer words were ever spoken, but it doesn't stop people from worrying about the day-to-day -day movements of the financial markets. Now, next week, the market's going to be open. What do you think is going to happen on Monday? Are we going to be up or down? Hang on, Bob. Let me get my crystal ball out. It's uh, I got I got <laughs> I got to get out of the closet here. You need a crystal here. ball, right? All you need is a coin. Flip a coin. Oh, yeah, you know, coin. every day you got a fifty percent chance it's going to be up or a fifty percent chance it's going to be down. That's how uncertain and unpredictable every single day happens to be in the financial markets. But over the longer term, you know, markets always tend to go higher. But it's just uh, you know, it's almost like we're we're so influenced by what's happened most recently. You know, as normal, average human beings, which we all yes, are, we are, we tend to make predictions based on our most recent experience. So what do you think? Most people are bullish or bearish right now, right? Huh. I mean, I, I get more of a bearish sentiment worrying about when the next shoe's going to drop. You know, you hear a lot about, one of the prognosticators talk about all the time, I was at a conference last week, is the market obviously, right, obviously is overvalued right now. So obviously, it's not good value to buy stocks. And that's the, I would say, the conventional wisdom that I've been hearing over and over again currently. Yeah, it's just um, when anything's so obvious, it's usually already known and it's already factored into the market. The market's already moved on to worrying about something different. You see, everything that's going to happen is already priced into the market because there's so many intelligent people that are studying and making decisions on a daily basis. And that's the beauty of the market, right? It's an auction and it takes all the bearish sentiment and all the bullish sentiment and all the good ideas and bad ideas, puts it all into one cauldron and voila, you know, the market comes up with an efficient price. So trying to outguess which way the market's gonna go means you gotta try and outguess what everybody's thinking. That's pretty difficult when there's millions of people involved. Yeah, and that's why I like to say that you know, I'm smart enough to know that I'm not that smart <laughs> because yeah. and that's that's what we found is you know we always say the most dangerous strategy is anticipation and the one thing you find over and over again you know in my almost 20 years in the business Bob your 40 years in the business is always expect the unexpected whatever everyone didn't factor in that was going to happen is typically what happened so and this is why you hear the term diversification so often mm -hmm. 
Diversification sure. really is a strategy that says, I have no idea what's going to happen next, but I have built a portfolio. No matter what the scenario is, I'm prepared. So if the market goes down, well, I have bonds in my portfolio that protect me on the downside. Mm. If the market decides to keep going up, well, I have money you know, allocated to the market to take advantage of that. You want to have you know, I hate to use this term, but an all-weather portfolio. It's kind of cliche, but that's really what diversification is about. Well, let's just think about the people out there that try and time these things, right? I mean, we had the stock market peak in May of, of 2015, and it, it pretty much went down to sideways until just virtually the day before the election in 2016, and the market's that's been right. straight up since then. You can't time that. You have to be invested, you know, in order to take advantage of a big booming bull market. Yeah, so hopefully you feel more enlightened to know that you know you're smarter if you think you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're I actually, think uh, Warren Buffett says it, an uh, so succinctly. Yeah. He says that you know that the person with a lower IQ can actually outperform the investor with a higher IQ. <laughs> it pays to be less. Yeah, it's true. Less intellectual when you're an investor. But you know, Bob, that also makes me think about there's a lot of simple, obvious things that we can control, and a couple of things that I think about are. Risk, number one, you can build a portfolio that's less risky, and that means it fluctuates less, less mm -hmm. volatility, and you can control the amount of income that's coming in every year. Income's way more reliable than market volatility, and you can build a portfolio with a lot of certainty to know that I have X amount coming in every single year. And to me, that's like a cornerstone of building a very reliable retirement plan is having reliable income. You know, well, being it's also right. So you also can control where you save and how you save. In some cases, you have households where you can't control your spending. I, I recently had a had a negative experience with spending. A negative experience? What uh, what happened? Mom redid the house. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's been your whole life. It seems <laughs> that way, doesn't it? <laughs> Look, every every five years, like the sun rises in the east, mom is going to you know do some sort of redecorating, which is going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> uh, that's why it's so important to plan whether you're the uh, person giving the advice or the person taking the advice. Yeah, and, then, and there's other things like taxes. It maybe you can't control spending spending in your case, but you know taxes are another thing, but there's a lot of things you can control. And if you're sitting there thinking, I need to build a portfolio that doesn't anticipate the future, that's prepared, it's income driven, I can start looking at the things I can control, like the income my portfolio produces, taxes, here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total master plan. It's a full plan that'll review everything. That includes looking at things like taxes. We'll have a CPA review last year's tax return to make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. Even if you bring in your legal documents, you know, those wills that you put together 15 years ago, we'll have an estate plan to review those to make sure they're up to date and what changes you may want to make to your estate plan. And then also, Bring in all your financial statements when they come in this month. Bring in those insurance policies, annuities, 401ks, retirement accounts, brokerage accounts. We're going to plot everything out for you on a simple three-page spreadsheet, our investment analysis spreadsheet, and we're going to determine, number one, what diversification do you have? What risk do you have in your portfolio? Where are the pitfalls? We're going to point it out. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? What hidden costs are in your portfolio? We're going to show you all the fees in your portfolio to see if we can reduce the cost. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. We're going to help you create a predictable income stream or increase the income on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan utilizing strategies we've literally worked on for over 40 years to determine are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? So just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, but no plan if you don't call. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Ryan Payne. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne. 
Chief Investment Officer of Payne Capital Management. And the market marked the 30-year anniversary of Black Monday by hitting all-time record highs and exceeding 23,000 on the Dow for the first time in history. Black Monday was the day 30 years ago when the Dow dropped 22%. That's the largest one-day decline in history. Put it in perspective, a similar drop today would be a decline of over 5,000 Dow points. Ouch. So the big question on the minds of investors is, will Black Monday happen again? Of course, anything is possible. And as I always say, markets like history don't always repeat, but they often rhyme. For instance, just like now, we were experiencing a big, booming, secular bull market in 1987. Back in 87, the bull market was only five years old and still had 13 years left to go on its bull run. Bull market today is eight years old and still young by secular bull market standards. Like today, other than the big drop, of course, on Black Monday, the secular bull market of the 80s and the 90s had very shallow dips and provided very few buying opportunities. We just set a record this week for the longest rally in history without a 3% decline. But the big difference between today and 1987 is basically interest rates. Bond yields got as high as 10% in 87 versus a little over 2% today. But bonds rallied big when the stocks crashed in 1987 and by simply realigning our clients' portfolios to their targeted asset allocation, that was basically taking the profits on bonds when they rallied and buying stocks while they were on sale, all of our clients had a positive return by the end of the year in 1987. So the lesson learned from 30 years ago is no one, I mean no one, can predict what's unpredictable and no one can know what's unknowable. But everyone who followed our A to B strategy, who stayed true to their targeted asset allocated goal-based approach, not only created a lot of wealth, but achieved their goals and know exactly what to do today, the next time the market provides, no matter how scary, a short-term buying opportunity, just like it did, 30 years ago today in 1987. If you're sitting there wondering, do I have a strategy that's based on my goals? Do I have an advisor who's going to adjust that strategy based on short-term movements in the market that no one can predict? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call at 844-752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now, back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain, Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's biggest goals at Payne Capital is to educate, educate, educate. There's a lot of financial information out there. We want to help you filter through so you can make the best decisions about your own planning and retirement. So we put together our newest guide just for you, our Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So if you want to get a free copy of this guide, simply text to 555-888, the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888, and you can get our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want them to. So simply text to 555-888, the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H. And in this segment, what we want to talk about is estate planning. And Bob, I remember a couple years back, I had a conversation with a client and I was trying to explain to him what estate planning was. And once I got through the explanation, he said, Ryan, so what you're trying to tell me is either the way I set things up, the government's going to mismanage my money or the kids are going to mismanage my money, and it's really what do I prefer? Yeah, that's really been my conundrum, Ryan. I can't decide what I want to do. (laughs) (laughs) I'll do a great job mismanaging your money. Please, keep that in mind. All right, okay. Fair enough. Um, But it's important. It's important to to make sure that you do transfer your wealth, and you do it in a way, as we say, with the least amount of government partnership, and to the people or the loved ones and, and cherished institutions that you want that money to go to. And I have to think, Bob, one of the biggest mistakes we see you make is just not having your beneficiary information set up correctly. Yeah, I, I see that all the time. And, and you know what, Ryan, what I'm finding now, because a lot of times people started with me 40 years ago, you know, they're older and their children are older. So where they might have had a son or a daughter who was five or six when I started with them, now they're 45, 46. They're married and, and they have accounts set up. And a lot of times the parents set up accounts for children 
and they set up retirement plans for them early on. But the beneficiary information is never updated. And that's what happens when you work with a stockbroker or, or a life insurance salesman who just sells product. They're not really looking at the plan on an annual basis. So if you have the wrong beneficiary there, you know, God forbid you have an ex, you know, ex-wife or an estranged child where you have, that look, circumstances are, are what they are. You know, it's like every family puts the word fun in dysfunction. Don't you agree? <laughs> Except for our family, of course, Bob. Of course, except for ours. <laughs> but that's um, so that's, important, and, it, and something you have to check, and is very rarely checked, where the information not correct. And, you know, sometimes you have, everybody has children, and they all come to the same gene pool, but every child's very different. And in some cases, you don't want a lot of that money just going directly to one specific child. Sometimes you want to set up a trust. So there is some thinking and planning that has to go into it, not just the day you set up the account, But every year you have the account. And I think that's also one of the values of having a portal or a place where all your information is so you can update Mm -hmm. that information. Mm -hmm. You know, with our 360 portal, the one thing I'm doing is I'm sitting down with every client. We're adding in every single account that they have. So it's updated every day. But then when we're doing that, we're looking at how is it set up, right? Who are the beneficiaries? Because a lot of times you may have a 401k from a job from 15 years ago that you just let stay there and then maybe your your brother and sister are the beneficiaries and now you're married. So that stuff happens all the time and it just doesn't get updated. So just by putting everything in one place, and that's what I love about having a portal where everything is. The other thing is loading up all those legal docs right there too because the other thing you'll find a lot of times is your power of attorneys and your healthcare proxies. You may have someone on there like a, maybe a family member you don't talk to anymore who's making decisions if you're incapacitated that's a really big problem so i think it is important and i think the best way to do it is like let's get everything in one place and that's why i love our 360 portal well it's not just the title right it's also making sure you have their date of birth and their social security number you know one of the clubs that i belong to there's a robert Payne, and i go by bob Payne. sometimes i get his bills sometimes you get five bills you know, how would you like it if somebody inherited your inheritance? Yeah, that would, uh, I would be really, really upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would. So, you know, dot those I's and crossing those T's is so important. And it's something that everybody has to keep a couple of sets of eyes on, not just your investments, but also how things are titled. The other thing, thing I would just add to that too, is because I, I was working with a client this past week, is communication, is understanding mm-hmm. how everything is set up. And this is why it's good rule of thumb every couple of years to review that estate plan. So, you know, I know your will probably was done 15, 20 years ago, so it probably is a good time to revisit it. But I had a client who is the trustee on his mother's account, and they just had changes done in the last five years. And the problem is he's trustee with his sister, and him and his sister get along fine, but his sister's husband, he likes to control the money. He's not one of the trustees, but he has a huge influence over the sister. So what he was concerned about is when their mother passed, is he going to have to be a co-trustee on these assets, which means he's going to have to deal with the brother-in-law. You know, We went back and we talked to the lawyer and just found out how does all this stuff work. And we found out that in his case, the money would get segregated out. So he wouldn't really be in bed per se with the brother-in-law when it came to making decisions about the part of the assets that are for him. So I think, you know, understanding that stuff ahead of time before, you know, you're not on God's green earth or before a family member's not here, everyone knows what's going on and figure out what changes have to be made. That's a critical, critical thing. And every trust can be a little more complex than just naming a trust. And we have situations where we're helping the client's children. And when I ask the parents, well, what rights do they have under these trusts? They don't know. Because, you know, they set it up a while ago, they talked to the attorney, put the normal language in there, but they don't even know what normal language is because that's not their day job. So it's really important to, you know, review that estate plan from time to time to have a fiduciary who looks these things over because, you know, it can get very complicated and you can end up getting in over your head and run into family problems, which you don't want. You know, who needs any unnecessary family problems? And they happen. We've seen it firsthand. So (laughs) yeah, communication, getting things up to date and putting everything in one place are huge steps towards making the smoothest transition and really setting up your estate planning in the right way. Because the other thing we talk about so often is if you're the one who runs the money, you're the one who makes all decisions, knows where everything is, and you have a spouse that's in the dark, that's a real problem. And with now with technology the way it is, there's no reason not to have everything put in one place 
so that you know your estate plan, God forbid, something happens to you, it's a smooth transition, and you're not putting your spouse in a position where you know they're stressed out, they don't know where everything is, and you know now more than ever you have the technology and the capability to do that. I think it's a perfect well. That's the greatest thing about the financial 360 portal, right? Because you have one spouse in every relationship who's very focused on the finance, on the investment strategy, on the estate planning strategy. And no matter how much you try and inform the other spouse, they're just not interested. But I'll tell you what, they do get interested when the other spouse passes away. And having all that information prepared in one easy to understand location makes all the difference in the world, especially in the event of that transition. You know, if you're sitting there thinking the same thing, you know, I control all the finances. My spouse is not on top of the financial situation of our family what we'd like to offer you, if you're one of the next few callers, and you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement, Ryan and I will run for you our renowned Total Financial Master Plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what you can expect. We're going to set you up with your own 360 financial portal. So you can see if you're paying any unnecessary taxes. You can check and see if your legal documents are titled properly, if you have the right trust, if you have the right wills. We're going to look at all of your investments. We don't care where you custody those investments. They don't have to be custodied in one location. What you need is a window on your financial situation to make sure that you are investing everything properly. We'll take all of those investments and we'll break it down into one simple, famous investment analysis spreadsheet, a three-page document that breaks down all the key elements of a successful portfolio. Diversification, Ryan and I talk about this every week. You wanna make sure that you're getting the return for the risk you're taking. You don't wanna have that overlap in your portfolio. Hey, it's great when it's going up, but boy, does that hurt on the downside. You wanna make sure you're not being overcharged on your investments. We wanna look at fees, especially those hidden costs buried deep into the prospectus of your mutual fund or in that thick annuity contract. And we wanna look at income and make sure that you are optimizing the income available on your portfolio. We want a more dependable revenue stream in retirement. And lastly, we're gonna tie it all together into one total financial master plan, which will answer that age old question. Are you gonna outlive your money or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my son and I have been perfecting now for over 40 years. We wanna help take your family from your financial point A to your Point B, your goals, your dreams, do it with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as any fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Call us now at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. It's a full review. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, be one of the next 10 callers at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 752 Six six nine two. Here's your shot. Take advantage of it at eight four four plan NYC. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for financial pornography of the week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what's happening out there in the world, the profane world of financial pornography this week? Well, Rye, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary? Yes, happy Um, anniversary. 30 years ago, uh, this past Monday was Black Monday back in 1987. Most of the gray hair I have came from that day. (laughs) 30 years ago. That's incredible. I can't believe it's been 30 years since the great market crash of 1987. Biggest one-day decline in history. What do you think the percentage was, son? Well, I know my financial history pretty well, so I know it was 20% plus on that day. Was a 22% drop Ooh. following Black Friday, which was the first triple-digit drop in history, and that was a 5% drop. So we had a 27, almost 28% drop over a basically two-day period. If that happened today, that would mean the market would be down close to 6,000 points when it opens on Monday morning. Yeah, that is what I would call 
a buzzkill bomb. <laughs> and I remember, <laughs> I think you were on vacation well, in Hawaii when that happened uh, back in 1987, which that must have been, oof, I can't imagine what it was like to wake up. Well, believe it or not, it was an investment conference for my former firm, Merrill Lynch. And so I was out there with a, a whole bunch of financial advisors and stockbrokers back then. And you know what they did that Monday or Tuesday? They, they got on planes and they flew back to their offices. You know what I did? You went by the pool and you ordered a cocktail. Actually, I extended my vacation for the week. Well, it was already planned. But see, what happened with that type of decline is our clients actually benefited because it was about three, four years earlier when we came up with the whole A to B investment process, the consultative approach that we use to this day, which balanced our clients' portfolios risk against each other. So our clients were right. as heavily weighted in bonds as they were stocks. And what happened when the market declined in, in 1987, bond market went through the roof. And it really only impacted the U.S. market. The international markets uh, didn't get hurt as, as much. So by the end of the year, 1987, right. every one of our clients made money. So basically what you're saying is because of diversification, which was something that back then was very avant-garde. I mean, even now when we look at portfolio reviews, we see that for the most part, you're not diversified because you typically have all your money in US stocks. Another reason why you don't have all your, your eggs in one basket. And so important to have that bond exposure. It amazes me you were doing that back literally 30 years ago and you had pioneered that before the crash, which there's no way you could have foreseen that ahead of time. How did you ever come to the conclusion that I need to have my clients more diversified than they were since you actually did this pre-crash in 1987? Well, I, I applied the one rule that's the most uncommon thing on Wall Street, son. Okay, so what is the most uncommon rule on Wall Street? Common sense? <laughs> Common sense. Common you sense. Go. You know, I started in the mid-70s. And it okay. used to drive me crazy. You know, I would set my clients up with a portfolio of investments. And as soon as the market went down, they would liquidate. And I said, this is crazy. I mean, how do I keep a client invested? That's where the whole A to B process came from. I tied their emotions. See, there's no emotional resolve to a bond or stock portfolio. People That's are right. very emotionally attached to their goals. So we simply change the conversation. We have our clients focus on why they have money and why their money needs to make a return. So if you want to have a lifetime of income you can't outlive, you want to gift money to charity, you want to educate your children, these are goals. And people are very yeah. emotionally attached to achieving those goals. And then we attach yeah. that emotion to their portfolio. So it wasn't a matter of, you know, is it time to be in or out? It's that I need to be in because I need to have a positive return net of inflation and taxation. Pretty, yeah, because, pretty I mean, simple idea, don't you think? Well, that's the thing that amazes me is it's 30 years later and things haven't changed that much. <laughs> I mean, right? We're still emotional when it comes to the markets. Markets are still volatile. And really, diversification is still really the solution that a lot of times we're not using in our portfolio because like, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week. I mean, you know, I don't know if there's going to be a crash like we had in 1987, but it's always possible. And if you're not set up already, to your point, you know, if you don't, if you're not invested towards your goals, if you have, you know, what we call in your portfolio just a, a collection of products that has no tie to your goals, it's very hard to stay invested. And furthermore, if you don't have the right allocation, I mean, that's the thing I see right now more than ever is you don't have money spread out in different asset classes. You have a lot of different names in your portfolio, a lot of different brokerage accounts, but you own a lot of the same stuff, right? Owning just U.S. stocks is not a solution. Your point out in 1987, had you not had bonds in your portfolio or international exposure, which is actually a diversifier against the U.S., you would have been you know, out of luck basically when the market went down 22% in one day. Well, here's the most important point. Where was the Dow on the morning of Black Tuesday? Oh, man. So we're going about 30 years, and we know the Dow right now is trading over 22,000, right? Almost 23. Almost 23. That's true. I'm going to say, I'm going to take a wild guess. It was probably trading at, I'm going to say 800. A wild guess. Well, that's a little low, but it was at 1,700. Now, wow. it dropped from 22,300. What would you give today for the opportunity to invest your money at 2,300 we're at 1,700, right. knowing Doesn't even matter. full well that the market was eventually going to go to 23,000. <laughs> yeah, I mean, crazy, right? I mean, it makes no difference. Had you lost 20% in that one day, has no bearings 
over your return because in what is it, 30 years, the market went sure. way higher than that. That it, that <laughs> it just seems insignificant in the bigger picture. And I think that's the point when we look at these shorter term moves in the market. Well, even more importantly, right? Where do you have the money to invest if you're 100% in equities when it goes down? You didn't have the Thank bond you. money. You didn't have any any fuel to add to the fire, right? I mean, you had the greatest buying, a generational low in the stock market 30 years ago, an opportunity to make wealth beyond your dreams. And if you didn't have any bond money to liquidate, you missed the boat. It's such a great point. And that's the other thing too, I like to make that point is, you don't want everything in your portfolio working. And that might sound counterintuitive. But you need things in your portfolio that are down. You need things in your portfolio that aren't moving because eventually... When the market goes down, you know you have something in your portfolio that's now working. You have other money that goes up. That's the point of diversification. So you want to hope and pray that there's things in your portfolio that are down, so you can buy them. You know, I think like right now, a good example are things like commodities, which have done nothing. You know, you, you need places in your portfolio to buy, and that's such a great point. If you don't have money spread out, if it's not diversified already, you can't take advantage of those dips, which are awesome opportunities. Yeah. So a little common sense. Got to be in it to win it but you need a strategy that lets you sleep at night. Balanced portfolio based on your goals, A to B, greatest idea ever. We've created so much wealth for people based on that simple concept, and we still fight the emotional war every day that's uh, <laughs> against the media. And that's the reason we don't want anybody listening or reading financial pornography. All they talk about is how not to invest. All you need to do is invest in your goals. Yeah, and if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I need a portfolio built around my goals that's properly diversified, here is your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run that total financial master plan and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's a full review that will look at everything. We'll even go ahead and build you a preview of our 360 portal so you'll have a window into your entire financial life. You'll get to look at everything, one portal, one page. If you bring in last year's tax return, we'll have a CPA review it to make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. If you bring in that will you put together 20 years ago, we'll have our estate planner look at that to make sure that's up to date, what changes you want to make. And if you bring in all your statements from all the different financial institutions where they're held, we'll plot it on our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. We'll look at your diversification. What risk do you have in your portfolio if we have another Black Monday? Are you well protected? What about income? Can you increase or optimize the income on your portfolio? You need income in retirement. It's more reliable. We can help you create a reliable income stream. And we're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? Do you have a lot of high-cost mutual funds, annuities in your portfolio? We're going to break down all the cost and help you reduce the cost so that your portfolio is as efficient as possible. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we've worked on for literally 40 years to make sure your money's going to outlive you. You're not going to outlive your money. All you have to do is give us a call at 844 plan nyc that's 844-752-6692 if you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over two hundred thousand for your retirement our team will run for you our total financial master plan no obligation no cost just give us a call at 844 plan nyc that's 844-752-6692 this is no pain no gain financial radio This is no pain, no gain. Without us, you're just stuck where you are. So let's get moving and back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain. And one of Bob and I's goals here at Payne Capital Management is always to educate you to make sure you're as well prepared as possible with your finances. There's a lot of information out there, a lot of bad information out there. We try to filter it out to give you common sense advice. So we put together our newest guide, The Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So if you text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888, you can get access to our guide at no cost, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? To get a free copy, simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H 
to 555-888. Again, text the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can actually check us out on the World Wide Web. And yes, Bob's hair is real. Check it out. But go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And you can learn a little more about Bob and I and what we do here at Paying Capital Management. And if you ever have a burning question you want to ask myself or Bob, simply email us, questions at bebullish.com, questions at bebullish.com, and Bob and I will answer your question directly. And if it's a really good question, we will answer it right here on the show. And it's every week. We got some pretty good questions. Bob, first question comes in from Elizabeth, who's in Hackensack, New Jersey. She writes in, Bob, I'm retiring in six months. I'm worried about what will happen if we have a market crash before I get to the finish line. Do you think I'll be okay for the next six months? Which well, you know, it depends, about. Elizabeth, because I don't know what's going to happen Monday morning, let alone what's going to happen in the next six months. And of course, it doesn't all end in six months. You know, retirement is just the beginning of a new stage. Most of us are going to live 30, maybe 40 years in retirement. So we got to make sure that our portfolio is positioned properly to you know, help us along on that journey. But so if the market does crash in the next six months, you know, and market corrections are temporary, but they don't feel like it when they happen, you know, it really depends on how you're allocated right now. So yeah. like Ryan and I have talked about this entire show, it's really about how you're balanced towards your goals. You know, if you have a lot of money, you don't need to take a lot of risk. And if you don't have enough money, you know, there are other options available to you. Yeah, and I think the question shouldn't be, do you think I'll be okay for the next six months? The question should be, am I going to be okay for the next 30 years? And yeah, that's true. really what planning's about because there's no such thing as a plan for six months when you're talking about retirement planning. You know, it's, it's a long journey and everything you do to set it up is going to take you over a longer period of time. I'll give you an example, Bob. I had a client call me a couple of weeks ago because he was so afraid the market was going to crash and he's like, what changes should we make to our portfolio? And my answer was, when I put this portfolio together, I wasn't thinking about the next couple months. I put this together because I'm going to own these positions for the next 30 years. <laughs> it has no bearing over what we're doing with our portfolio. Every thought decision should be, how is this going to transpire over time, not over the next couple months? It's crazy. Well, with that being said, you also have uh, interest and dividends that are invested that are coming in that if you don't have to live off those dividends and income, you want to rebalance your portfolio with cash flow. Yes. And as you have more success in the market, like we've had in this big booming bull market, you can take less risk. You can take that income and dividends and, and not invest m into more stocks. You can invest in more bonds, more fixed investments, more negatively correlated investments to give you a more balanced approach you know, to achieving your goals. Because over yes. your lifetime, Rye, isn't it more about staying invested than you know, being right every day? Well, and that goes back to what you just said. And I think this is the thing you really need to think about with your portfolio, especially if you're sitting on a lot of cash right now, and there's a good chance that you are. It's earning nothing, zero, <laughs> zip. Yeah. And the real magic to investing is whether it's up or down. You know, you talked about the Dow being at like 12,000 back in at the crash of 1987. Well, a lot of that return that came in over the years was just the dividends that paid out. And we talk about that reliable income in your portfolio. And that comes from bonds. That comes from money in the markets over your lifetime. So it has nothing to do with being in and out of the market. It's about collecting those over time and compounding that, reinvesting it back over your portfolio or eventually living off of that income when you retire. Well said, Roy. Well, what else did we see in the mailbag this week? Well, Raymond wrote in from Largemont, New York. He wrote in, Ryan... I own my own business, and I haven't paid much into Social Security over the years. Even though I've had a nice income, is this going to be problematic for me in retirement? For some reason, I never worried about it until now at the ripe old age of 58. Well, 58 Sounds is still young. Sounds young to me. It's very young, Raymond. You're, you're a spring chicken. Well, th that's the whole point of doing some retirement planning and not waiting till you retire is say maybe you are going to get less in Social Security. You know, if you work for the government, you may have a nice pension, but if you're self-employed or you know, you, you're a W-2 employee, you may not have that nice pension coming in, and Social Security may be a little bit lower, especially if you're self-employed. You have to look at, have I built a nest egg up that I can live off of as a supplement? And that's why it's critical to start your income planning now, a couple of years before retirement, as opposed to like, hey, Bob, I'm 66 now. Let's start doing some planning. Yeah, well, you know, it's also, it's not, I think the other thing, Ryan, when you have your own business, you have a lot of opportunities, you know, to really 
back end load your retirement plan. So if Raymond That's can right. stay, you know, if he can work for a couple of more years, it would be in his best interest to, you know, put as much into a defined benefit plan as possible. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about a business owner. If you are a business owner, is you can be a lot more creative with putting money away pre-tax or avoiding tax. You know, when you work for a company, you're very limited in what you can put in your 401k. But as a business owner, you know, building a, a custom designed pension plan, you can put a lot more money away and save a lot more money on taxes. And I know I'm, we're business owners. Business owners, you love not to pay tax. We all love not to pay taxes. Let's let's be real about that. So that that's a great point as well. And so, Rod, these are great questions from Elizabeth and Raymond. And if you're sitting there thinking, you know, I have the same kinds of questions, what we'd like to offer you, if you're one of the next few callers and then you've saved at least two hundred thousand for your retirement, Ryan and I will run for you our renowned Total Financial Master Plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. But if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we're going to do for you. We're going to give you a preview of your own 360 financial portal, a window into your financial life. We're going to have every aspect of your financial plan reviewed, starting with your taxes. We're going to have our CPA partner review your most ta- recent tax return to make certain that you're utilizing every tax benefit available. We're going to look at your estate plan to make sure that your beneficiaries are titled properly, make sure that trusts are set up and titled properly. We're going to look at all your legal documents, both your wills and your trust, to be certain that your estate plan is not an IOU to the IRS. And lastly, take all those investment statements that just came in the mail, put them in a shopping bag, make an appointment, let us do all the work. We'll break it down to a simple investment analysis spreadsheet, three-page document, pairs apples to apples, and looks at all the key elements of a successful investment strategy. Diversification, fees, income. We want to be certain that you are diversified across asset classes and within asset classes so that we have another Black Friday or Black Monday. You're going to have the opportunity to take advantage of it. We're going to look at your costs, the fees, you know, what you're being charged or overcharged on your portfolio. We want to be certain that you are reducing those costs, both the obvious and hidden fees that are buried deep in that prospectus of the mutual funds that you own or in that contract, those insurance contracts, where those costs are hidden so well. And we want to be certain that you're getting the most income, a more dependable income stream. We want to optimize that income from your portfolio because, as we've said many times, income is more dependable than capital gains. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan that will answer the age-old question of whether you're going to outlive your money or if your money will outlive you, utilizing strategies that we have been perfecting now for over 40 years. We want to help take your family from your personal point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, and do it with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as we as professionals can provide. So don't waste time. We have a couple slots left. If you have over 200000 safe for retirement, call us at 844 844- Plan NYC. That's 844 752 6692. It's the only true full review of your finances at 844 Plan NYC. That's 844 752 6692. We have a few slots left. Give us a call now at 844 Plan NYC. That's 844 752 6692. This is no pain. No gain. Financial Radio. With a constantly changing financial landscape, having a written, customized plan is more important than ever. In New York City, turn to the team at Paying Capital Management. Call 844 Plan NYC to schedule a complimentary financial review. That's 844 Plan NYC. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I's main goal of Pain Capital, as always, is education. We want to make sure every week that you're getting the best advice, the most practical advice for your own planning and investing. That's why we put together our newest guide, Truth About Retirement and Taxes, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So get a copy of that free guide. Simply text 555-888, the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H. Again, text the word bullish to 
888 and you can pick up your own complimentary guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA to 555-888, text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H. And it's time for my favorite part of the show, for our spotlight segment where we dissect a real financial plan and we uncover what we call the flaws or pain points, that's P-A-Y-N-E, so you can avoid some of the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And we have a very special, special guest on the show this morning, our colleague, certified financial planner, Michelle McKinnon, superstar investment advisor. Should I keep going? Good morning. Keep going, Ryan. Just, I, mean, I love to hear it. I love, I love the compliments. <laughs> Flattery is, uh, goes right to Michelle's heart. It does. So make a mental note. Good morning, Michelle. Thanks for uh, being on the show. We appreciate you uh, joining us this weekend. Happy to be here. And you worked on a case recently, I and mean, this couple had a lot of pain points or flaws with their retirement planning. Why don't you give us the rundown? Yeah, so it's a a couple here in New York City, and I think this example really shows the importance of financial planning and not just investment planning, Ryan, because investments was definitely a pain point for them, but there were so many key components, like reviewing their insurance policies, recommending refinancing their mortgage, reviewing their beneficiary changes because they recently had a child. So again, this is what it's so important about doing financial planning, not just investment planning. Yeah, because a lot Sounds of like they're, they're they're taking full advantage of the 360 financial portal. Absolutely, Bob. Yeah, and that's a good point because financial planning is all these things. And you know, my mind is there's a lot of people that say that they're quote unquote financial advisors, and they're not talking to you about your insurance. You know, should that be updated? They're not talking about refinancing your mortgage. So obviously, you're hitting on a lot of things here that this couple was not being addressed with their quote unquote financial advisor. Yeah, not at all. Even when we looked at their 401k plan, we could cut costs dramatically by moving to a new third party. Again, so many different pieces, Ryan, that aren't just about investments that ultimately are saving them thousands of dollars. I have a question on that, Michelle. So you're saying, so they have their own retirement plan, basically? Yes. Okay, so he's self-employed or she's self-employed? He's self-employed, so he has his own business and she's also employed in the firm. Now I'm looking at this plan that's set up did he know what cost he was paying in his 401k plan? Absolutely not. And here's the thing is... Why didn't he, Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> well, they knew that they were paying administrative costs because they were writing a check to the third party every year. Okay. Mm-hmm. But they also didn't realize that the advisor was taking a fee on top of that, which, you know, ultimately that's your prerogative. But when we totaled the fees, it was astounding, including the mutual fund fees on top of that. It was pretty crazy. So basically, so it wasn't very the transparent. Worked, he wasn't aware of it until he uh, saw your analysis. So this 401k had hidden costs. Yes, I'm Ryan, shocked. hidden I'm costs. <laughs> and I like how you were able to break out here on this investment analysis spreadsheet. In this case, I'm looking at the numbers here, Michelle. They were paying almost two percent a year in fees on their retirement plan, which that's a lot of money going into that financial advisor's pocket not into their pocket for retirement. And that didn't even include the third-party administrator fees, too. Crazy. Oh, that's on top of it. Yeah. Wow. That's expensive. We'll, so, let, uh, so yeah. Michelle, okay, so the first thing was, you know, finding fees and costs and, you know, showing them how much that would compound in their lifetime was probably a key selling point to the whole process. But what'd you find with, the, with their other parts of their financial planning, like the insurance review? What were they doing right or wrong with their insurance? Yeah, so they they definitely were extremely uninsured. They've got a couple kids, right, paying for college, all those different things. So one, they were uninsured, and by the policies that they were currently paying for, they were only getting a couple million dollars in regards to a death benefit. Now, Mm. we reviewed the insurance policies. We went through an insurance broker, and they recommended different policies where they could get almost $5 million more of coverage and basically pay the same amount of money in premiums. That's astounding. Yeah. Wow. It does pay to have your insurance policies reviewed once in a while. And that's the thing, because we are living longer in the actuarial tables. A lot of the insurance policies you may have locked into even five years ago, the deals are a lot better now. It's always worth to find out. And I like the fact that you used an independent insurance person to review this. So they're not a captive agent of one company. So they're only selling you one company's products. 
big plus. You mean there. right? You find it surprising that the insurance company that issued the original policies weren't calling their clients to let them know that there were cheaper, better alternatives available? I'm shocked right now, Bob. Between that and the high fees on the retirement account that the client couldn't see, I just I'm over I'm overwhelmed at the moment. <laughs> what about the bank, Michelle? Did they tell them that they, they should refinance their mortgage, or were they happy to have this client paying way too much on their uh, mortgage payments? I think they were extremely happy, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> So what happened with the mortgage? Well, they actually were in a seven-year arm type of situation because they were assuming that they were going to move. And they, after talking with them, they were like, well, we probably don't want to move. And I said, well, we really need to get moving on this mortgage because potentially interest rates are going to stay low for long. So in a couple more years when that seven-year arm is up and you guys go to refinance, you know, you might not be able to lock into a 4% rate. So they were happy that I addressed that because ultimately the time was ticking and that they needed to make that decision now. Yeah. I mean, just great to to review everything. And I think that's the key is that just giving a 360 view as opposed to just pigeonholing the investments. I mean, that's a lot of different things that are all connected that you're helping this couple with. And if you're thinking to yourself, you need a 360 of your financial life, you want to know, do you need to update your insurance policies, refinance your mortgage, reduce the cost on your portfolio? This is what a total master plan is all about. So if you're one of the next few callers, we have a couple slots left. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, We'll give you this full review. We'll even set you up with a preview of your own 360 portal so you can have a window into your entire financial life, look at everything. If you bring in all your statements, we'll have everything reviewed for you. We'll put it all together. We'll have someone in look at those insurance policies. Are you paying higher premiums than you should be? Can you get better coverage than you have right now? We'll look into that. What are you paying on your mortgages? We'll look into that and make sure you have the best deal a real advocate on your finances, and we're going to look at those pesky fees. Are you being overcharged on your retirement plans like this couple was? Well, we'll show you where you can reduce costs. In this case, we're able to increase the income on the portfolio as well. Do you want more income in retirement? These are all the issues that our total financial master plan is going to address. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine Are you going to outlive your money or will your money outlive you using strategies now? Myself, Bob, and Michelle, we've been working on this for literally four decades to make sure your family gets from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. We have a few slots left, so don't delay. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, but no plan unless you call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another fantastic show, Michelle. Always a pleasure to hang with you on the weekend. What does a certified financial planner do on your time off on the weekend? Just out of curiosity. We do a lot of things, Ryan. Just a lot. (laughs) Total financial master plan all the time. All weekend. (laughs) Well, thanks for being on the show. And Big Bob, what's up with you, man? What's up for the rest of the weekend? You know, Rob, just sitting here thinking there's not enough O's in the word smooth to define how great Michelle was with that case. (laughs) Man, I see her head getting bigger and bigger here in the studio. It really is. (laughs) On that note... Have a great rest of the weekend and be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.